can we welcome, please, to the Bar Bar stage, Mr. Pete Fitch, who's going to talk about things he's found in books. So, Pete Fitch. Thank you very much. Um, so, uh, as a quick background, uh, for 20 years I was a second-hand book dealer. Uh, and uh, predominantly dealing in, uh, in paperbacks. I would scour uh, charity shops and car boot sales uh, and find paperbacks and, uh, and I used to sell them uh, on a stall that I had uh, down by the West Pier uh, in, uh, in Brighton. And uh, when I bought all these books, I would get them home, I would, uh, and I would um, be pricing them up, and often when I got them home, I'd flick through the pages and often people would have left something uh, behind, in, tucked in the books. Uh, and at first uh, I, used to, I used to look at them and then chuck them away, and after a bit I, I started putting them to one side. Uh, so I'm going to show you uh, a whole selection of, um, of things that I have found in books. Um, and uh, it's lots and lots of photos that I'm going to show you. Now, when I was a, uh, a kid, uh, my parents, we used to go around to other people's, uh, uh, their friends for uh, supper, and uh, their hearts would, your heart would sink when they said, would you like to look at our slides? And, uh, and you'd then be forced for uh, half an hour to sit and look at a whole load of um, pictures of um, places uh, that you've never been and uh, all the friends uh, that they've got that you've never met. Now this is going to be much the same. I'm going to show you uh, a whole load of um, pictures of people that you don't know and places that you've never been. But I don't know who the fuck these are either or I don't know where these places are. So here we go. Uh, so just a whole bunch uh, of people. Just um, uh, people's mothers, uh, brothers, um, grandmothers, uh, somebody's girlfriend, somebody's loose boyfriend, a serial killer. No one needs that many nuts. Um, lots and lots of, um, I got lots and lots of old um, passport photos, uh, bad faded passport photos, um, and lots of uh, photos of celebratory moments um, often out of focus. Uh, I've got uh, possibly the UK's largest collection of uh, out of focus uh, photographs. Um, moments of, of elation uh, here in, uh, in faded, uh, faded, fuzzy uh, uh, celebration. Um, pictures of uh, people kind of, sort of chopped off uh, in their prime. I've, um, I've got a theory that uh, one of the things is, uh, with the photos is the, uh, the bad photos, the fuzzy photos, the chopped off photos. This is because this belongs to an era of the, of the analogue. In the digital world, we no longer have bad photos. Because we take the bad photo, somebody's eyes are red, the finger, your finger's in the way, you've chopped off their head, you just delete it. But in the old days, you played that game of uh, roulette where you would, um, you'd have the film, you'd send it off, uh, and then about two weeks later the photos would come back through the post, you didn't know what you'd get, you'd open them up, there'd be three or four that you'd put in your photo album and the rest would get used uh, as bookmarks. Um, I've got a theory that if aliens were to land uh, on Earth and to look at uh, the evolution of human beings, that they would think that uh, from the uh, 1960s, 70s, 80s, we'd actually evolved as, an, as a species very quickly to be able to take good photos, because no, bad photos no longer exist, but it's just merely a, um, a symptom of, uh, of technology. Now, a lot of these photos that I have, you kind of, I find myself, um, uh, I enjoy the kind of, almost looking at, at the images, and you kind of work out kind of some sort of stories. I love this photo, uh, just, I, there's two reasons that I love the photo. The man in the beard is just so happy. He looks uh, so ple pleased there with, the, um, with his tankard uh, there. And also, I particularly enjoy the arm around the shoulder of the gentleman who is looking so incredibly uncomfortable uh, with this uh, show of, uh, show of um, close proximity. Uh, there's lots of photos of, um, of uh, romantic moments, of couples together, uh, a drunken smooch uh, on, a, on a foreign disco floor. Um, uh, here the couple, uh, there's, uh, you can have a zombie 
um, cocktail there, I see. Um, this one, uh, and one of those kind of ones where you stick your, your head through. Um, and, uh, and also this uh, picture of a man uh, looking rather grumpy, holding a child uh, next to an elephant, uh, which appears, I don't know whether there's candles on the elephant's head or uh, some sort of um, crown. Now, I, this photo, I looked at that gentleman and, and he seemed strangely familiar. And I bought uh, a book collection uh, from Petworth uh, and it was quite an interesting book collection, and this was, uh, when in it, was in it. And I was able to then work out, there were lots of other bits of paper, and I was able to do uh, a little bit of um, uh, detective work. And uh, I kind of sort of worked out uh, that he, was, he worked in the media, uh, and then through various bits of paper, uh, eventually worked out who it was. Any, we're talking D-list. Paul Ross. Number one, yeah, absolutely, got it in one. Paul Ross, Jonathan Ross's uh, brother. Now, um, Paul Ross, um, and so I got this collection from his wife, uh, and they'd obviously split up, and she was just getting rid of the, the whole lot. Uh, so I got all of Paul Ross's uh, book collection. And, uh, and then um, one day, Paul Ross had a, a radio show on Sussex, BBC Sussex, on a Saturday morning. And, uh, and he was uh, like, oh, what's the strangest thing you've ever found? So uh, I rang in, and I said, I found a picture of you and holding a child in front of an elephant. Um, uh, sadly, they didn't put me on the, uh, on the radio. I think they was, uh, some, some weird stalker. Uh, this, is, uh, this is Jim, uh, Doug, uh, and um, I've got her name here. This is important. D uh, Doris. Um, uh, I know that because it's written on the back of the, of the, uh, uh, of the photo. And, uh, and with this, I'm always wondering, uh, did Doris, is Doris really with, with Jim or Doug? I kind of, or, and there's part of me that kind of sort of hope, uh, in my mind, you can't help like making up these little stories sometimes when you look at it. I can't help feeling that she came out all uh, glammed up in her, uh, in her um, arm length uh, gloves. She came out with Jim, but Doug, the, uh, the dapper, um, uh, Terry Thomas look-alike. Uh, he kind of moved on in. Um, and, you and I can't help, uh, with a lot of these uh, ones, you, you kind of enter into this world of other people's lives. Uh, a lot of the photos are of, um, of glamorous places. Um, a lot of uh, postcards uh, that I get. Uh, that one from Tenerife. Um, this one is uh, uh, London by Night. On the back it said, um, it said, uh, Jim was nearly on TV last night. You could see his arm at Ted Heath's party. <laughs> um, she also commented about how he got the wrong newspaper, um, but, uh, but luckily it had one pound uh, tokens for holidays to Paris. And she said, I do enjoy his mistakes sometimes. Um, <laughs> The photos are uh, often uh, exhilarating. People are uh, in beautiful places. Um, uh, clouds from uh, maybe from an aeroplane. Uh, and, uh, and sometimes um, slightly less so. Um, uh, this is a picture, just in case you don't know, of a, a, a rather manky staircase. Um, if those of you at the back can't see it very clearly, uh, here's a close-up. Uh, there's several photos uh, of it. Now, also within within these, uh, not just photos, but I also get um, little um, lists and uh, and written things. This one was in a uh, book um, about how to have a good relationship. Um, you don't have to read the book because it's all been summarised into five points: loving words, kind actions, quality time, thoughtful prezies, physical affection. That's good. Um, uh, and sometimes the uh, and sometimes the things you can find a little bit more. Risque. Um, so, uh, this is a wicked tongue massage, reaches the parts that ad uh, others cannot reach. Um, uh, you realise that you have reached a certain age in your life when you get a flyer like this and you go, mmm, just down from Noodle Express. <laughs> I always thought 
So I calculated how many books, I can't remember off the top of my head how many books must have passed through my hands in the 20 years that I was selling. Probably somewhere in the region of a quarter of a million to, to, to half a million books would have passed through my hands. And you would have thought that in all those books you would have, I would have found um, banknotes, I would have found money. I only found it once, I only found it once. Uh, I found it in this book. Uh, I don't know what it was that uh, attracted me to, to this book. Uh, there was a £20 note in it. I found, the, I found the note actually before I bought it. It was in the, uh, it was in the Oxfam bookshop in Port Slade. Uh, and, um, and so I, uh, being the good, honest person, I decided to take the money out and I gave it to the people in Oxfam and I thought, I thought, I wasn't going to buy the book, I was about to put it back. And then I thought, oh, no, well, what I'll do is I'll take it home and the, and the gods will uh, will see me th through and I'll look it up on the internet and it'll be worth like absolutely loads. And I took it home and I looked up on, on the internet and lo and behold, it was worth £1.20. Uh, so I decided to keep this book and the, uh, I, so I've kept this book and all the items that I'm showing you, I keep them in the pages of this book. This is my uh, official receptacle. Um, this I got, uh, this was a get well card, get well at once, open it up and it says, hey you, you know what to do lady, get on it, it's shit but you know it'll be alright in the end, we're rooting for you tough cookie, lots of love, Caroline, kiss kiss. <laughs> we all need a Caroline in our life, when times are bad, I want Caroline on my side, that's exactly uh, what I want. Uh, this next one was a uh, piece of A4 paper, paper um, folded into four to uh, make a card, um, a, a child's drawing that was done in um, felt tip, and it says, To Ben, I'm sorry for the argument we had the other day, and sorry for no hugs, from Xanthi. Don't show anyone this, except Ella and Bradley. <laughs> This one, uh, I was intrigued, another one that was um, folded into four. A present for the fruit queen. Hmm. We open it up. Pineapple face, banana hair, strawberry eye, lemon brain, papaya vagina. Grapefruit belly, melon boob. This one. Dear Julie, sorry for being a shit last night. I've no excuses. I'm sorry. Love, Les. P.S. We'll do better. <laughs> We've all been there. I've been there uh, with Les. Uh, I really, I, 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 I love that. Um, some of them are more fanciful. Um, so this next one is a bizarre, it was on a series of, it was, they were stuck to the back of a, um, of a train ticket, and it's just uh, it was three uh, post-it notes, and it's different ways to die. Uh, ten different ways. Um, number nine, being surrounded by waste paper baskets. Uh, number seven, mauled to death by pedigree cats at cat show. Best in show. Number six, swallowing acid rain whilst yawning at a bus stop. Number five, dislocating your head, trying to see what time it is whilst too close to Big Ben. Uh, Number three, caught in revolving doors that don't stop. Uh, number one, trying to eat a, try, two, trying to eat a light bulb to impress a young lady whilst tipsy. Or well, number one, ritually sacrificed by pigeons. Uh, this one, uh, this one was a uh, uh, long letter. I said, dear Mrs. Rowland, we were so sorry to learn of your burglary. It must be awful feeling to know that someone has been going through your possessions. We were, however, very flattered to hear that they had considered the silhouettes worth pinching. <laughs> and we were very pleased that we could replace them for you. However, your payment was over generous and we would be pleased if you would accept in addition a copy of Leon's book. So she's had some stuff stolen um, and some silhouettes. Uh, they've replaced it, but she's given them too much, so they've given them a copy of Leon's book. And it says, uh, who knows, you might start a new hobby. Hmm. So what new hobby uh, is Mrs. Ronan uh, going to start? It's uh, Making Ships in Bottles uh, by Leon Labastour. Now I can tell you that Mrs. Ronan didn't 
uh, didn't um, start that hobby because that book had not been opened, uh, was in absolutely uh, pristine condition. Uh, this one. Hi, Julia. I got uh, you this book. Um, move on to the. It's blah, blah, blah. It's just. And then I'm sorry again for the way things worked out between us. I'm still not quite sure how your feelings for me could have disappeared so quickly after what I thought was a lovely romantic weekend in Donegal. Oh. Maybe you are a much better actress than I thought. You certainly convinced me you were keen on me. Oh well, I suppose there's no use crying over spilt milk. Hope you're well, Chris. Now, that very much sounds to me like milk that has been spilt and is being cried over. But it was within the pages of the book. He had given her a book. Um, so you've got this situation where Chris and Julie, he's obviously really keen on her, um, and, uh, and, and it's, you can feel it, can't you? You can feel that gnawing away um, at him. And you're sort of going, okay, so he's, this is the one last chance She's brushed him off, but he's giving her a book. This is his one, his one last chance. He's in the, drinking in the last chance saloon. He's giving her a gift, some way to win her back. Maybe uh, some romantic uh, poetry, uh, a beautiful, um, a beautiful uh, lyrical book, or man of war, man of peace, the unauthorized biography of Jerry Adams. Yes, that will get the girls back. I find a lot of lists, a lot of, uh, I find a lot of uh, lists, shopping lists. I love shopping lists. When I'm in the supermarket and there's a shopping list on the floor, I always pick it up and always going, how many tins of beans? And uh, uh, I, I, I just uh, love seeing how other people uh, shop. Uh, this one is a list of sorts, um, but it almost takes on a sort of uh, a version of haiku. It says, insulin and needles, puzzler and pen, dressing gown and ninety, red apples and coke, thyroxine. <laughs> it's uh, a haiku for going into, uh, for going into um, a hospital. Um, other images of, uh, of this dogs, there's cats. This cat, this cat's called Pebbles. Um, I know that because uh, I've got Pebbles vaccination. Uh, <laughs> uh, now, um, uh, but um, uh, I happen to know that sadly Pebbles is no longer with us because Pebbles, from her vaccination uh, um, record, was born in 1988. So unless Pebbles is a kind of like a record-breaking cat, Pebbles is no, lo no longer with us. Uh, and a lot of these people that I've shown you, who I don't know, who you don't know, they, um, a lot of them maybe aren't with us anymore. Uh, and uh, it's a kind of reminder, these are just like fleeting moments, little fleeting visions uh, into other people's lives. Um, it reminds me a bit of, if you ever walk along a street, you've got lots of them uh, here in St. Leonard's where there's no front garden, um, and you walk straight past someone's window and often they're sitting there watching TV and they've got the, the curtains open and just for a second you walk past and you get a little snapshot of what they're doing. They're doing the ironing or they're, they're just lounging on the seat on the on the sofa and then, and then they always glare back kind of slightly angry that you're looking through their window. Um, but it's part of you because well you know put a net curtain up. Um, but these are little uh, insights into other people's lives. We all know the letters that we've sent, the love letters that we've sent to people um, or that we've received but it's interesting to see uh, how other people uh, function. Um, the most moving one, uh, I'll finish on this one, uh, is this uh, postcard. And it says, um, uh, this is to certify that you, fill in the name, uh, occupation heartbreaker, uh, have been registered as a really nice little jam tart. <laughs> and, uh, and then I turned it over, uh, and, uh, and it's very, very faded. Um, but I could just about make out what it said. And this is what it said. It said, Dear Fred, just a note to let you know that we've been called up for the front and we leave tomorrow. We'll write soon, goodly luck, your brother John. And it's dated the 17th of February, 1916. 
And you kind of, uh, we, we, you know, we all know the, the horrors uh, that befell uh, the soldiers uh, who went out to fight uh, uh, on the front. And it's that realization uh, that here I'm holding possibly one of the last things that was ever written uh, by this man. Uh, and uh, what I love about that in some ways is also its understatedness, uh, um, the, the, the stiff upper lip, um, and it's almost the, the things that aren't written uh, within that letter, that in, within that note. Um, and all these things are little fleeting moments. We live now in a world of digital, uh, so increasingly we don't find things in books so much because we don't leave notes to each other. We send, uh, we send text instead of, um, um, instead of using post-it notes. Uh, we don't write letters to each other, we send emails. We don't have physical photos because we have them all on our, on our phones. So all of these things are like a fleeting moment, not just of, of the past, of these people's past, but of our past. And for a lot of social historians, um, it's quite tricky to be able to keep up uh, because we're moving in a different way. When we all pass on, the chances are there isn't going to be up in our attic a big, big um, parcel with, uh, of letters, of our letters. Uh, there will be, maybe your hard drive will be up there, but will anyone bother going through the hard drive to find all the messages? So all those little moments are kind of being lost. So I love the fact that these are little mementos that I'm able to hold on, to touch and to hold and to show to you. Thank you very much.